Hey, this is Terry Bain. How we doing, good people? We got another fun, exciting episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're joined by Brett Shapiro, who's going to help you get started up. Kind of like an old Rolling Stones song, if you think about it. But before we introduce <laughs> Brett and talk about that, what we need to do is introduce you to my good friend, longtime pal, podcast co-host, Facebook marketer extraordinaire, maybe that's the E-word for today, Janet E. Johnson. How are you doing, Janet E. Johnson? Very good. Very good. Extraordinaire. I think you might use that one, I feel. Sorry. Can we use exemplary then? Can I, can I change it? Like sure. exemplary Facebook? Because exemplary is my new I got to look these things up to know the meanings of some of your words. But. Exquisite or exemplary. Those are, the, like, I'm, those are the levels I'm going for these days, okay. as opposed to craptacular. I'm trying to move up my game. It's just I been, see. It's been, Very it's good. good. We've started Very off in a craptacular fashion so far. <laughs> I've been in charge of the controls, people. It's not going well. No, it's cool. We're having fun. Um, we'll make it. We always make it work. So We yeah. do. We do. So let's introduce our fine guest today, coming at us live from Reno, Nevada. Recent transplant, lived in L.A. for a long time. So I want to hear a little bit about some L.A. stories because those are always fun and maybe a little train wreckish. Um, but he's in the business of getting your business moving. In fact, he's actually built a very cool system to help you get started up with the, all the paperwork, all the corporation filing, all the docs that you need to deal with. So we're going to learn a little bit about what that actual startup process is. Because it turns out if you're running a business, the government wants even more of your money than if you just work for a business. So the way you get to get paid like that is you got to file all these different things. So we're going to learn some things today. And I think it's going to be fun. So Brett Shapiro, Welcome to Business Growth Time. Welcome. Sir. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Janet. It's wonderful to be here. Spectacular. Let's use that one. Spectacular. That doesn't start with the theme, but we'll use it, man. We'll oh, it's, a, it's an E-theme? Sorry. It's an e I, yeah. Listen, our audience is Ernie. They like E-words. We have no okay. idea if that's it's true. It's all based off that I have my brand, Janet E. Johnson. Uh, got so it. he always makes fun of, or we make word E. It's always an E-word. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. <laughs> a, he, he's had a what a, almost 200 shows of ease <laughs> <laughs> which is why she pro appropriately called me out on extraordinary because i'm certain that we've used that before yeah. um but that's okay we're allowed to because let's be honest not even the hardest core ernie member has watched all 100 and i think this is probably 155 so Six, mm -hmm. seven, somewhere in there. So anyway, enough about that. that that's extraordinary right there. It's kind of cool, man. It's kind of <laughs> cool. Janet and I have known each other since high school. So it's been a, it's been a wild ride. And this is, I don't know, we're five years into this. Yep. Fun. Yep. Fun. I like it. I like crazy. it. So Brett, let's give a little flavor. Let's start with the company and how you describe it, you know, so and where people can find it. So, cause there are inpatient people that just want to be Googling stuff as we speak. So start there and let's talk about the journey from how you got to where you were to where you are. And then we'll just ask questions along the way. It'll be super casual. Sure. So this, uh, our website is govdocfiling.com. It's G-O-V-D-O-C-F-I-L-I-N-G.com. Um, we try to help new small business owners, entrepreneurs through the formation documentation, right? So there's 50 states with 50 different variety of requirements, which makes running a business in the U.S. kind of complicated, right? Or starting a business a bit complicated because you know, I'm in Reno, but, you know, 50 miles of California and the, the rules are different for, you know, whatever reason. So we've gone through the process of figuring out what is, is required from LLCs, the corps, the DBAs and all 50 states. Uh, we've tried to consolidate it into one simple form. We've, you know, we've done our best to eliminate the multiple like up sales through, you know, 20 different steps to check out. And we tried to kind of package it all in and help entrepreneurs get through this process, get it filed correctly, and then we you know, support them through their journey. Awesome. That's really cool. That's cool. You know, I'm one of those stories that they said, just slap on an LLC, um, did that, did, had no idea. Like, I'm just like, okay, that's what I was told to do. And then I ended up 
I'm an S corp now, but I got bit by not moving to an S corp sooner. So like there's certain things that people don't have a clue about out there. And, you know, you have to learn how you have to start a business and do a business, but then to do all that on top of it is crazy. Yeah. Forget about having to do the work that you might get paid for. You got to do all this work before you can legally and from a, again, tax perspective can get paid. So can you walk us through the difference between an LLC and an S corp and a C corp and a, uh, LLP, I guess it's more of a, like a legal and accounting thing, but, uh, a sole proprietorship. Can you, do you understand those things, Brett? Because you must be a genius if you do. Uh, um, I am not a genius. You know, we, uh, we, we work with geniuses, hopefully that, that help can, can help clarify what the differences are. So, um, I'm not a CPA or a, a lawyer, right. But we've worked with CPAs and lawyers to provide information. I have a high level um, knowledge of the difference, right? Like LLCs are by far the most popular because they are the easiest to set up. They require the least amount of maintenance. Um, and it's a pass through entity, you know, which means that anything the business make, it just gets passed through. So it just kind of provides a layer of protection. Like the, it's a limited liability company, right? So if you're doing something, especially if you're a service provider or work with individuals and you own personal assets, it's really important to, to put some type of layer between your business and your personal assets and then else you can do that. Um, S corps and C corps get a little more complicated. They require a lot, a lot more accounting. Um, so, you know, it's just depends, right? It depends on what type of business you're going to be running, what type of activities you're involved in. And then it's, far as like what and personal assets but ultimately it's better to be registered as one of these things as opposed to filling out 1099s with your own name on them and sending things out like if you're an independent contractor for instance like a freelancer right. you still should set up an entity is that is that true you know the, i think the the one of the big things that people or the main reasons that people like to set up entities like a sole proprietor, you, you register that under your name, right? So you have to have a DBA if you want to call it do business as something else. But what it does provide is you with a federal EIN, which, which gives you a number. It's like a social security number for your business. So, you know, with the amount of piracy there is out there, we, you know, even like, you know, if, um, what was the, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it was Experian, it was the other one, Equifax, you know, oh, the, one of the, yeah, they got hacked. So like your social security is really valuable. Um, so it provides you with an EIN that you can use with vendors to, to, to help protect yourself from, you know, from any type of identity theft. That's like the real basic level at the sole proprietor. So you can distinguish yourself personally from what you're doing with your business. But on the tax side of it, it kind of all, you know, blends together. Gotcha. 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 You know, I'm going to make a note here that this is a really good time to do a throwback to the episode where we did on establishing business credit. Uh, and I'll make sure that that little nugget is inside of the show notes. So you can go look at this. Hi, Joanne. Okay. So <laughs> that's really cool. So why did you get into this, Brett? Why did you say, you know what, this is a problem and I'm going to solve it? You know, just as kind of Janet was saying, where she just got thrown into it, started a business, was an LLC, switched to S Corp. I was in a similar position, probably about um, like six, seven years ago. I was doing completely different business. I was doing medical sales, and I was a 1099 independent contractor, which you know that's all I thought I needed, right? I I sell equipment, I get paid, you know, like job done. Um, but then there's there's a whole tax planning elements. And so when I had a coworker, it was like, oh, you got to start an S Corp. And I thought he was speaking a foreign language. I had no idea what that was. Um, and because I was kind of a go-getter and just wanted to, you know, I was like, ah, I can figure it out. So I went on the California's Secretary of State. I printed some forms. I filled them out. I sent them in and I filed them. And I, I made a bunch of mistakes that cost me like filing penalties. I named something wrong. I checked the wrong box. And so at that point, um, I felt like there was some resources lacking out there to kind of guide people through this. 
I mean, there definitely are a lot of sites out there now, but back then there was only a handful that kind of pulled that space and, and the price points were, there was kind of a high barrier to entry on some of it. And so we set out to provide entrepreneurs, new business owners, a kind of simplified resource that really packages services together and gets them started, gets the formations done correctly. And then we provide you know, a number of follow-up steps and suggestions and partnerships that can help them really start and build and grow their business. Do you guys provide like payroll help or anything like that? Or is that- Yeah, so through the years, we don't do it personally. So we've kind of vetted the different payroll companies out there. We partner with, uh, currently we're, we're working with ADP. Um, you know, that's just one of the many, but they provide our customers a 20% discount on on their services. Um, so we have, we, we've we gone through the steps, like because I started our own business and I've done it a handful of times and I've it's, it's been a learning process and I've learned through my mistakes that I've been able to kind of provide a step-by-step or at least the, what makes the most sense step-by-step. So like, you know, at this point, you're probably gonna need this. And so here are some recommendations and here are some um, partners that can help you, you know, through those steps. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that it's a complicated world. I mean, I used to do my own payroll and like you said, made so many mistakes. I'd get these letters saying you, you owe us more money. And I'm like, wait, I thought I already from the government, you know, I thought I already paid that payroll, you know? And so it was just my mistakes and not knowing what I was doing. And so having like, now I use Gusto, you may have heard of that one. Yeah. That's funny. I'm actually in conversations with them and Oh, like okay. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, um, Angela, was that her name, Terry, who was on our podcast? She talked about some things about in financing and she helping entrepreneurs too. And, um, she recommended Gusto and I'm real happy with them and it's $25 a month. So I mean, yeah. to run your whole payroll, it's pretty, pretty beneficial for you. For I mean, month. right now we're really fortunate. There are a lot of companies out there that have been really innovative and, and simplified the process and really brought the price point down. You know, we've tried to do that on the filing part, but there's, payroll, even credit card transactions, website building, marketing, all these different tools. That, <laughs> yep. Like, you know, you want to, to stick with what your your strength is, what your expertise, and you don't want to, I mean, every business owner wears a lot of hats, but there's sometimes it's time to give someone else the, yep. you know, like the, Best the, thing accounting, ever. Yep. the yep. accounting hat, definitely something yep. I don't Get a like bookkeeper, so. don't do that. Yep, exactly, exactly, yep. So two quick show notes, episode 130, Understanding Business Credit with Ty Crandall and Managing Your Business Money, episode 151 with Danielle Hayden. Very good, Terry. You're going to want to take a look at those if these things are important to you. It all fits together. Yep. Yep. And Brett, you should connect. We should figure out how to connect you with those two folks because there's a lot of like Ooh, fun little synergies going on. So I like it, man. I like it. I like it. Do you have any idea from a percentage perspective of like what percentage business owners go in, get started and set up the right way as opposed to just kind of wing it and blow it over time? Cause that seems like a constant thing. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be a hard number to, to, to kind of come up with, but um, there's, I think more people now are are leaning towards kind of using some type of service provider. Uh, there's a lot out there. There's some big names, um, but you know, everyone's on Google. And if you Google how to form an LLC, you'll get a lot of different things that pop up. Um, so, but there, I mean, every state has that information on there as well. So it's not like you need to use a, a service like ours. I mean, every there's everyone has a different comfort level of what they want to take on or learn or have the time to research. So the, 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 the information's out there, the secretary of state for each individual state has, you know, sometimes five forms, sometimes 20 forms, you know, that's what makes it kind of complicated. It's like which one you want to pick, which one you should pick for the business you're going to run. And why might someone use you as opposed to a CPA or an attorney to get started? Well, we're definitely cheaper than attorneys. Mm-hmm. Um, and CPAs as well. What we've tried to do is, 
we understand that at the beginning, sometimes entrepreneurs have an idea, but they don't have a lot of either you know money or or assets or startup expenses, right? They want to try to keep it pretty lean, and this can be expensive, right? Depending on the state, certain states. I used to work out of California. There's a $800 minimum for an LLC. Uh, Nevada actually has an upfront cost that's much. So some states are are expensive to get started. Um, the other ones aren't. So what we've tried to do is package a service that gets you your state formation, your federal formation. And then we've also bundled a lot of legal documents. So, so doc, legal documents and, and lawyers can be very expensive, as you guys both know, just, you know, you pay someone just to put an operating agreement together. You're even though they might crank out a template for you, they're still paying your hourly fee, which can range from you know 150 to $500, depending on the lawyer. So we've taken that expense and, and passed that savings along to our customers. We've had lawyers draft what we like to call is like a, it's like a plug and play template, right? So if you're looking to we always recommend once you fill these out to have a lawyer kind of look at it to make sure there's no major issues. But for most entrepreneurs, for most small business owners, a lot of them don't even do these documents. So we provided these templates to get something on paper, to get things signed, especially if you have a partnership. When there's partners involved, you definitely want to write out you know, the rules of the partnership and, and who's in charge of what and percentages and get those things signed at, at the beginning so you don't run into problems later. So we packaged five essential, what we call essential legal documents. Um, and then we've had a lot of our partners kind of help out walk people through the process. We get a free tax analysis. We have a business insurance consultation that we have provided. Uh, we put together a business setup guide, which is like a 20 page PDF, which kind of goes through the process of step-by-step -step of what you might want to look at next. You know, if it's um, payroll or if it's bookkeeping or website development or marketing. So that's kind of what we've tried to package up. And we don't upcharge for that. Like we have our, our filing fee and we group all this together to try to pass those knowledge and savings along to our customers. Mm -hmm. Love it. Very good. Now, do you do anything with the, um, you mentioned websites and stuff to, with the GDPR privacy policies, for instance, because I run into a lot of clients that don't even have a privacy policy on their website. And I'm like, oh, you have to have that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all new, right? So we've worked with our legal team to make sure we're compliant. But, um, you know, we have recommendations that we can do, but we, uh, we don't we don't personally provide documentation because that's a that's a tricky one. It's one of those things that's new and it's it's always changing and there's the updates. So yeah, that's if you're, if you're online and, and you're concerned about the GDPR, it's probably best to kind of consult a, you know, some kind of attorney or someone to, to make sure that your private policy is compliant. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I agree. Good. All that GDPR stuff again. Jeez, Janet, you're making my head spin. I know. Good talking Actually, about that. GDPR well, it's funny how it didn't hit hard out. in the United States. It's more yeah, about. it's really a European law that we've had to kind of adopt because the internet yeah. is international and so we get new visitors. But Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think a privacy policy is just a given. I mean, but there's people that build websites that just still don't even have a privacy policy at the bottom and they don't realize it, you know, unless if somebody tries to build it themselves, it, you know, that's the issue but if they have a web i'm shocked when i see a web developer do it and there's no privacy policy that's not yeah. the proper web developer <laughs> definitely very important and, and for you to take payment online i think most of those providers are going to require that so yep yep I'm look, exactly i'm looking for our privacy policy on the bottom of our website janet e johnson where is it I don't know. Uh huh. Janet E. Johnson, you all talk about my that. website. I know that we probably don't even have GDPR on our website. <laughs> Way to go! Way to go! I'm it's, I'm happy. You know, I was having gonna... multiple websites to take care of. It's a lot of work. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. See, that's why we need people like you, Brad, that can help. You know that kind of thing. That's the thing. So, how long is the journey with you typically? Like, once somebody. You know, you're talking, it sounds like a lot helping with people 
at the beginning, you know, right. you know, starting up, but do, do they, do people stay with you for a long time and, you know, for six months, a year or life or how does that work? So we, the initial paperwork, depending on the state can take anywhere from, you know, five business days. Some states are backed up because of COVID and lag, you know, and, you know, the reduction of resources, the government, the state governments, and the federal government are taking a bit longer to get things going. But um, you now we have boots on the ground in a lot of different states, and we have agents that can walk paperwork in to get it done uh, more quickly than than say others. But so after that, you get your you know your state formation filing, you'll get your federal filing, and at that point, there's a lot of different avenues you can go. But we not hold your hand, but we'll try to follow you for at least the first couple of months, right? Our site has a ton of content. We're always doing new research and, and trying to post blogs and, and even new articles. And so our customers become part of our, our email thread of newsletters. And you know, we kind of have that same like business guide that we put together. We kind of do that in a in an email fashion as well, where every week we'll that we'll try to time out like, all right, let's say we start our business in uh, August, let's say in September might be time to start looking at payroll providers or something. So we're there for our, our customers and our clients. Um, we try to stay in contact, um, you know, so it's kind of the process that we have built in now. Okay. And are you doing that through sequencing and email marketing, just kind of staying in touch with people or is it more on yeah. a one-to-one -one consult stuff? Uh, it's both. You know, we have agents that are available via phone and an email and chat as well. But we like we've I've spaced and timed out the email process to try to kind of coincide with what a business might need in the first couple months. So we try not to bombard people with marketing email, but it's more it's more informational and, and kind of guidance rather than you know the services aren't come back and and file more businesses with us. It's like, here's some suggestions and here's some, you know, service providers that might help at this stage in your company. Cool. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I like it, man. I think it's an important service that you're offering. And how often do the rules of engagement change? How often do the state or the Fed change how businesses apply? Is it, I mean, like the tax code changes every year. Does some of this other stuff change? There's updates to the forms, um, but it's pretty consistent. Really what changes is, is the fees, right? So states kind of re out, they, they look at their budget and, and see how many LLCs they may have formed that year and think that maybe they need to charge $20 more on that or something. So um, we're always constantly having to be in touch with the different secretaries of state and to make sure that the correct fees are being um, allocated to, to each customer, you know, that's something that, you know, an old form can, can really get you tripped up as well. We've, we've seen that before where, you know, you look at your, it's like little tiny font on the bottom it's edition from 2016 and like last week they updated it and, but there's, it's still available online and everyone has it. So it's those type of things that, that are changing more than like the actual formation process. That makes sense. All right. Tell us one really kick-ass story about living in LA. Well, I did live in Marina Del Rey. And so uh, I'm pretty sure that whole SNL skit to Californians was based on uh, my neighborhood. I actually lived across the street from the uh, coffee bean. <laughs> nice. That's great. But uh, I don't know, being in LA, you just kind of, you know, you run into to all sorts, right? you're at the market and you know you'll see someone famous next year but you know most of LA is uh sunshine and traffic <laughs> if you can narrow it down to two words it was sunshine yeah, and traffic yeah. that's yeah. awesome I've heard of a lot of people moving from LA to Vegas what made you decide to do the move so California you know it's my home is where I was born my family still all live there but it it has become increasingly more difficult and more expensive to run a business out of California, um, especially if you have employees in California. So for me, it was, there was a lot of reasons personally, but also financially per in the business as well, where being headquartered in Nevada, there it's, it's been an easier process to get things going. Um, the 
employment tax is different, the the corporate tax is different structure. So there, you know, it all really depends. Like if you're you live in California, there's advantages to having LLCs in other states, but if you're gonna if your customers are paying you, if you're a service provider and you're gonna get paid revenue from California customers, then you're not really gonna avoid tax. But for us, we're you know, 50 states plus and so it made sense for us to kind of go into a state that supported our business and growth um, rather than kind of making things a bit more difficult. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Well, yeah, it's kind of, it sounds like almost similar to, if you've heard of John Lee Dumas, he has a podcast, one of the largest podcasts out there, and he moved to Puerto Rico to get away from all the taxes. <laughs> so there you go. Well, you know, that was uh, as, as I've Growing businesses and things. Uh, Puerto Rico did come across my desk at one point because they yeah. have a very enticing tax rate, but you also have to live in Puerto Rico, and so the, and, which is a beautiful island country, uh, but it also has huge hurricanes, which you recently saw. So yeah, his house actually got nailed by one. I think it was about two years ago. Yeah, yeah. after he had moved there. Yeah. yeah wife but, and I looked at a great condo penthouse right on the ocean. It was two hundred and five thousand dollars. It was like stunning. And we're like, hey, it probably won't be standing in three years. <laughs> it's like, but it was. I, and the people are so cool. I would. I love going to yeah. Puerto Rico. It's a great. Yeah, no, great. It's great non-state i don't know what so, it is i, I guess yeah. if you really want to cut those taxes you go to puerto rico <laughs> a, so. that is that's the that's the investment right it's like it's tax if you're really trying to find a way to not pay taxes and be close to the you know the mainland then that's yep. where you're at that or guam i guess but oh yeah. well, there you go that's a better one but oh, yeah great. there's been i mean as as you've kind of seen with some of the larger corp there's been movement out of california for you know those companies have much different reasons that are on a much larger scale than what we did but um, we've seen a lot of growth and especially in Reno here with with a lot of the Silicon Valley they're moving out here so ah interesting yeah I've heard Vegas is a really good place to have a business so I have heard that in the past eight I mean Nevada obviously but yeah well good well let's finish up with your link again the tell everybody where they can find you so they can learn more and then um we'll get finished up sure our website is govdoc filing so that's www.govdocfiling.com um you know we do offer filings for every state at a sole proprietor to a, a c-corp level but really what we've also wanted to provide for users and your podcast listeners is a resource right so we are constantly updating new content or we have a, a blog post we have all of our service providers that can help you know even if it's you're past the filing stage there might be something on our site that you can educate yourself with and and maybe work with one of our partners and and you know take that step in your business so we we just we're trying to be a resource we're trying to help entrepreneurs and encouraged entrepreneurs to, to start something, right? This is in a unique time that we're all home and we have a lot more availability or time because we're not commuting or sitting in the office. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity, the world's changing. And so we're trying to encourage people to take that, that leap. Very good, very good. Yeah, I love it. I think this is a great thing for new people. I mean, I think I have, I, I know my um, family's talked about my husband is in business for himself, but I end up having to do it all because there's more pieces in that back end than you would think. So I think this is such a beneficial thing. And no matter what, and like you said, on top of it, the cost savings on hiring an attorney and CPAs um, definitely need to look at your company first, for sure. Yeah. And we have a newsletter sign up. So, you know, even if you're past the formation stage and, you know, we don't have to, we're not trolling for customers here. We just want people to get the information they need. So uh, we have a pretty consistent email campaign, which goes out and provides, you know, updated information. We had a, a huge roll up for the PPP and all the additional, the idea of funding that was happening. So we've collaborated with people and lawyers and accountants and financial advisors to, to really help our customers previous and future, um, you know, through these, ever-changing times 
Cool. So you have a lot of resources in addition to it. Perfect. Awesome, Brett. Well, I'm going to let Terry finish it up and close it out. You are. Go wow. This, <laughs> we're really Terry, you, Terry started it all, so you got to finish yeah, it. Yeah, I'll make it Terry do it. <laughs> Seems like a way to go, man. This is it. All right. So you can see all 156 past episodes over at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast. Or if you want to hit podcast slash blog evidently that works too i don't know why it's janet's fault no i'm just kidding janet does exactly. awesome um and if you'd like to hang out with us and have further conversation you can join us in our facebook group that is facebook.com slash no face no it's just business growth time dot xyz janet e. johnson tried good. to throw me a curveball i was like it is facebook.com slash business growth time but business growth time dot xyz so Brett Shapiro, thank you so much for joining us. I think this was informational. Do you have uh, like, do you have like a key, like a single thing that people just need to do? Like, what's one type of action they can take right now to make a difference? Is there anything? I don't I even say, know if it fits. That's I mean, a question we normally ask, but yeah, I would say go out and try it. Right, like there is always that barrier of fear. Um, that's kind of what holds people back. Like I've had a million ideas and they haven't all worked out, but I've always, I've tried them, right? Like you gotta, you gotta strap on your boots and go out and give it a try. So, you know, it, it's not very, it's some, you, know, you can start a business pretty, pretty inexpensively. And then you just, you just gotta go and see how it goes. So I would say go and do it, right? There's a, there's tons of opportunities. The, the world's changing the way people interact with, businesses with the internet with service providers is changing so there's a lot of opportunities so i'd encourage people to to go and try their ideas and and get started i love it like our friends at nike said just do it i like exactly. it exactly Brett, thank you janet always a pleasure ernie we'll see you soon thanks guys